Say, what happened? I waited half an hour at the automat in front of the salads. You said the salads, didn't you? Yes, dear. But the boss kept me so late, I just had time to get a bite. And I have to go right back. Have you eaten yet? Uh-huh. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. Can't you come in a minute? Eddie Miller, I thought you said you had dinner. <laughs> That's all I wanted. I wasn't hungry. Oh, Eddie, you must eat. You can't spend all your money on law books. Well, gee, you'll, you'll just waste away. I thought you said you wanted to marry a lawyer. I do, but not a dead one. Oh, how do you do? My name's Johnson. Shh, shh. Excuse me, my name's Johnson. I'll be sitting in K111. Would you please call me if there's a telephone message? You see, I'm having a baby and I want to be notified. No, that, 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 that is, I mean my wife. She's in the hospital and she's having a baby and she wants to be notified. Your check. Oh, thank you. Wrong ticket. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm so confused. There. A stranger is coming to our house. That way. When you're a big lawyer, won't I look nice in a coat like this? Helen, there's something I gotta tell you. What? Well... did. I didn't want to tell you because I love you so much. I was afraid. I was afraid you wouldn't forgive me. It's all right, Eddie. I understand. Where are you going, Helen? Oh, I, I'm just going for a walk. I'll be back in a minute. tell you how much I appreciate the way you've taken all this, May. You've been... You've been just great. That's all right, Eddie. I'm gonna get out of town. I've already written my sister. What's the matter, May? It's all right, isn't it? I had to tell him I'd pay him Friday. Friday? The whole $200? Well, why did you do that, May? Why didn't you tell him what I told you, that I'd give him a promissory note and pay him a little each week? I did. What do you say to that? He can't do business that way. I didn't understand you, Eddie. You got the money. Well, I wish you'd try to understand me. I can be through with law school in June. But if I haven't got this money, I've got to lose a whole year. And I worked like this since I was 16. What do you want me to do? Well, just give me his address, and I'll go up and see him tomorrow and talk it over with him. <laughs> Shh. Please, stop crying. Shh. All right, I'll give you the money. Give it to you tomorrow. Maybe by Friday you can think of somebody to borrow it from. Yeah, I thought of everybody. Good boy.
Feel any better? Yeah, I'm all right. You know, I kind of wish we'd gone to a movie instead. I hear they got a small show at the Rialvo. I seen it. You did? Picture any good? I didn't like it. It was a prison picture. Hey, yeah, wait a minute. I want a phone. Say, <laughs> you kind of had your nerve with it, didn't you, going to a movie? Were you afraid of being picked up? The safest place is a crowd. Yeah, I guess it's right with that. I talk Captain Siva. I missed that train by about two minutes. The next one doesn't go till one in the morning, so I got about four hours to kill. Yeah, I know it's only four hours, but I... Where do you want me to go? To a movie. <laughs> Where do you think I'm calling you from? The 43rd Street Theater. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Siva. So long. Excuse me, I'm having a baby. It's a dame outside wants to see you. Who is it? I don't know. You want to see me? Are you May Danish? Yeah. I'm Helen. I think Eddie told you about me. We're engaged. Oh, yes, he did. He can't give you that $200. What do you mean, he can't? If you knew what that money meant to him, how he scraped it together, working day and night, even going without food sometimes. Oh, gee, you couldn't touch a penny of it. Couldn't I? I'm not going to ruin his whole life. He's going to be a lawyer. Why, it'd be different if you were in love with him. But you're not, and you know it. Say, he doesn't have to give me the money. Oh. He can marry me. Marry you? And why shouldn't he? But he doesn't want to marry you. What difference is that going to make? I won't let him marry you. I'll marry him first. Oh, no, you won't. Helen. Please go, darling. I'll straighten this out myself. What's to be straightened out? You're either going to give me the $200 or marry me. And tomorrow. Marry you? He never will. What right have you got to be angry? What am I asking for, a favor? I'm sorry I ever laid eyes on you. And I hope two minutes after I marry you, you drop dead. Please don't cry, Helen. Oh, this is hard to forgive, Eddie. It'll take me an awfully long time to. We're going to get married tomorrow morning. What can she do to you if we're married? Nothing, I guess. Maybe next year, when I come up for admission to the bar... Well, couldn't it be explained? Couldn't you go to them now before she did anything? No, you couldn't do that. Come on, you better go in and see the show. We'll go home again. I'm a little anxious about this call. See, I'm having a baby with my wife. Hello. Hello, fourth floor. Fourth floor, please, yes. It's our first baby. For fourth floor? Could I speak to Mr. Neal? I, I don't know whether we'll have any more or not. Hello, hello, Sam. Well? Oh. Oh. But everything's all right so far, isn't it? 
You're not holding anything back, are you? Yeah, I'm still at the theater. Sam, you've been telling me 10 minutes for the last two hours. I am at the theater. Sam, you know what they gave Ruth Ether? Sam, if it's too painful, tell the doctor I said to give her ether. Well, I thought maybe the husband had to give his permission. I'd hate to be in that fellow's shoes. <laughs> maybe I ought to come down there. All right, all right. I'll stay here. So listen, Sam, I'll call you back at... Sam, I'll... <laughs> See, that must be a funny feeling, having a kid. I mean, for the man, too. Oh, everybody goes through that. Well, not me. All my life, I knew I'd never have a kid. I had a hunch. I thought maybe I'd get married sometime. I could imagine that, but... I guess I ain't got much time to get married now. I got to have a day off to get the license. I ain't got the day. Gee, I guess I'm lucky at that I ain't got a kid. How would I feel? You got any kids? Me? Sure, I got a girl, 13 years old. No kidding, 13 years? Eh? Yeah, she graduates public school day after tomorrow. She's smart as a whip, that kid. Gee, I'll bet you're excited. <laughs> if I didn't have to take you on this little trip, I could be at a graduation. Say, if you want my permission, we can postpone this trip. <laughs> Mako, I, I want to ask you something. Yeah? You don't feel like talking, I'll shut up. Hmm. What's the idea of busting out of jail 2,000 miles away and come to the one spot you were sure to be picked up? Yeah. You know every cop in New York knew you were here. And for the past three days, we all knew you were right in the Times Square district. Pretty dumb, eh? Sometimes I wonder myself. When I was in jail, I only wanted one thing. I wanted to kill myself. I used to wake up in the middle of the night screaming. All day long, I'd be in a cold sweat. It'd come right through my clothes, soaking wet. I thought if I could only knock myself off in a hurry, that's all I wanted. Once I tried it... You did? Yeah, I planned it all out. I cut my hand on a bed spring and the doctor came in with iodine. That's what I was waiting for. I grabbed the iodine and swallowed it. There wasn't enough of it. All I got was a bellyache. You think I'm a coward? Once I killed four guys by myself. But that was all right. I was allowed to do it. There was a war going on. I'm no coward. I thought about getting knocked off lots of times. I thought maybe I'd get shot sometime. I wouldn't mind that if it was quick. Or maybe the electric chair. But hanging, I never counted on that. I used to sit in that jail and hold my hand over my mouth to stop breathing. You feel like your eyes are gonna pop out of your head the next second and you got to take your hand away. I used to try and hold my hand there just that extra second to see what it was going to be like, but I couldn't do it. You were torturing yourself. I was going out of my head. And then I said to myself, what's the matter? I'll try and get out of here. What'll they do about it? Shoot me in the back? I'd thank them. <laughs> That'd be a favor. And you got away. Yeah. The devil crossed me. Nobody shot me. You should have stayed away from New York, kid. Yeah, that's the funny part. Once I got out, I didn't want to die anymore. But I knew I'd get caught sooner or later. And I wanted one more thing. I wanted to fix somebody, and he was in New York. You should have stayed away. So you can imagine how I must have hated this dirty... I just wanted to see him laying dead, right in front of me. Then I wouldn't mind hanging anymore. I just wanted to kill this one... Kill him with my own hands. Who was it, Michael? You know him. Anderson. Anderson? I thought he was a friend of yours. <laughs> I just knew him. He used to hang around Goldie's. He went with us out west. The boys had an idea about something out there that didn't pan out. On the way back, we ran out of money and I held up a gas station. There was one old guy in it. Gee, he must have been screwy. I had the gun on him, and he turned his back on me to grab a hold of a shotgun in the corner. The 
Then when we got back here, everything went smooth for a couple of weeks. And then I got picked up for this gas station job in Wyoming. I didn't even know I was in Wyoming. Anderson told on you? He didn't have to, mind you. Nobody picked him up. He just wanted to get a reward of a couple of hundred bucks and he squealed, sold me out. He knew he was hanging me. All for a couple of hundred bucks. Well, Miko, why didn't you get hold of him all the time you were in New York? He hangs out at Goldie's pool room, you know that. He's there right now. He didn't stay at Goldie's. He beat it. He was afraid of me. He read in the papers I was out, and he knew I'd come after him. Then I found out he was hiding in his wife's apartment, but nobody knew where it was. So I... I got all the Andersons out of the telephone book, and I started around, dressed like a letter carrier. Yeah. Where'd you get that letter carrier's uniform? I rented it. Said I was going to a party. It's a clever idea, all right. Yeah, but it wasn't smart enough. They still had 20 Andersons to go when they picked me up. What's the matter, kid? You sick again? No, no, I'm all right. Come on, let's get a little air. You're all right for a cup. Few of them are. Hello, Mac. When are you going to stop doing that? Say, when are you going to start wearing that? I've been a doorman for 22 years, and nobody's, nobody's ever, ever held, held up my box office yet. yet. I know, but you better go and get it. You can tell your insurance company, Harry, that before I'd shoot a fellow man, I'd rather be condemned to perdition. All right, I'll tell him, but go and get it. Oh, hello, Mac. Yeah. Say, Mac, I want to ask you a favor. Now, what is it, my boy? Well, you've known me a long time, Mac. And you know I'm not dishonest. Who said you were? Nobody, Mac. Well, what is it, a reference you need? I'll give you the best reference there is. Oh, it isn't that. Well, you're a fine boy, Eddie. I wish you were my son. Thanks. Oh, uh, Eddie, I just remembered I have something to ask you. Now, if you can't do it, don't be ashamed to say so. Just say it. What is it, Mike? Well, the rent got me kind of sudden. If you could spare $30 for a couple of weeks, I... Oh, it's all right, Eddie. I know you got your own expenses. I'll manage fine. Don't you feel bad about it now? That's just the favor I was going to ask you, Mike. And I was going to ask you for $200. $200? Yeah. What do you need all that money for? Oh, I just need it, that's all. I need it for school. It takes a lot of money. Be a lawyer, Mac. Don't be discouraged, Eddie. You know what the good book says? As you sow, so also shall ye reap. Yeah, good book. Yeah, when I was young, I didn't have faith either. Oh, I believe in God, Mac. Yeah, but do you believe he watches over you, that his miracles keep you from harm? Isn't that a bit old-fashioned, Mac? God going around helping people with miracles? Did you ever hear of a miracle? God opened the Red Sea for the Hebrews and saved them from the Egyptians, didn't he? I don't know. A little before my time. There are miracles today, Eddie. There are. They may not be big miracles, but they may be small miracles. An automobile passing in the street, or a rainstorm from heaven, or maybe even an accident. Who knows how God, in his wonderful wisdom, wills it to be done? Some little thing. <laughs> there you are, Mike. A miracle. Who knows? It might be. Nobody ever rings in on that phone. That's a peculiar ring. Hello. Hello. Miracles. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello. That's funny, it's dead. Telephone man, right away. Have you ever 
had any experience in having a... Young man, that has always been denied me. Oh, that's too bad. You'd never get up from that seat. You leave now, and I'll follow you in ten minutes. Darling, there's a small complication. I thought Tippy was going to use the car and show me. He always does, and I'd take a cab. But he didn't. Well, I could say I met friends who are taking me home. No. I'm afraid we'll have to sit this one out, dear. Darling, you're flattering, I know, but... But let's be grown up. Just staying here together for the whole show will be dangerous. We might run into someone we both know, and they'd ask whom you were with, and whom I was with. And then someone would notice the love light in my eyes. You see, other people are just as clever as we are. No, they're not as clever as you, darling. Now, the best defense is a good offense. Call up our mutual friend, your husband, and tell him not to work too hard, and that you bumped into me, a sort of casual thing. And all rumors that reach his shell pink ears will be discounted. I don't know where he is. But I do. I took him to dinner, myself. Then I brought him back to his office, myself. Give me a nickel. Call the number. Well, really? Is there any charge for this? Uh, is anybody using the phone when it got out of order? No, it began ringing by itself, which was funny, because nobody ever calls here. Mm. They always call the box office. There's no buzzing. It's out of order, ma'am. They're fixing it now. You can use that one. Oh, I see. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, may I speak with Mr. Temple, please? Mr. Temple's department store, isn't it? Well, may I speak with Mr. Temple? This is Mrs. Temple speaking. Hello, Tippy. Surprised? I'm calling you from the theater, from the lounge. Well, it's between acts, dear. Tell him about the first act. Oh, Tip, you'll never guess who I bumped into. Carl Barrett. Yes, that's how I knew you were at the office. Oh, Tip, Mr. Barrett asked me to drop in at the casino. He's giving a party. No, no, no. Yes, and so don't wait up for me if I'm a little late. Yes, dear. Good night, and don't work too hard. Why didn't you talk a little louder, darling? I'm afraid he couldn't hear you. Well, it isn't local trouble. I'll have to check from the office. What's the matter with it? Well, I'm not sure. Sometimes the cables get full of static electricity. All this piles up somewhere, it shoots out all at once. When you took that receiver off, you stopped this extra electricity from escaping. It'll shoot out again any minute now. Isn't it dangerous? Someone might get a shock and sue the theater. Ah, it'll ring once by itself. When it does, it'll be working again. How soon is that going to be? Oh, half hour at the most. Yeah. But supposing Tibby were to drop into the casino himself and find that we weren't there? Oh. But don't worry, you won't. He's got a lot of work to do tonight with his very attractive filing clerk. No. You're fooling. So help me, it's the truth. We're not jealous, are we? No, I'm not jealous. Honestly, I'm not. It eases your conscience? No, it isn't that so much. It's a little of it. It's mostly that I feel Tippy and I are a little tired of each other. Oh, and he's such a grand person. Well, tonight's his big chance. He's waiting for her to come back from dinner. I can't believe it. Not Tippy. Oh, don't you care, dear? I love you. You do, don't you, Carl? Yes, dear. Would you marry me? I'd rather than anything in the world, Carl. I'll be a very good husband. At least I'll try to be. Oh, darling, I know you will. 
Oh, I'm so selfish. I'm already dreading being without you and Reno. What's the matter? My clasp. My diamond clasp. I must have lost it. Oh, I hope not. Oh, Tippy, you'll have a fit. His mother gave it to me for a wedding present. Are you sure you're wearing it? Yes, I'm positive. Oh, I remember. I took it off in the car and fastened my collar with it. So my coat and a check for you. Did you? Go up and get your pin now, darling. I'll meet you here during intermission. Oh, darling. please. This is Helen, Margaret. Hello, Mr. Temple. I'd like to ask you a favor. Yesterday, you said you'd be able to arrange a raise for me. That would be at least five dollars, wouldn't it? Well, even if it were only five dollars, that would be more than two hundred and fifty dollars a year, wouldn't it? Mr. Temple, could you please give me two hundred dollars now instead of the raise? You'd really be saving money. Please, Mr. Temple. You could get it out of the petty cash in the safe. Thank you. Ask for Mr. White's apartment. I'll remember. Right away. Might have lost it in your car, ma'am. I don't think so, but I'll look. You didn't take it, Eddie, huh? No, no, ma'am. This is terrible. Intermission, five minutes. Intermission, five minutes. Intermission, five minutes. Uh-oh. Frank, my diamond pin is missing. Will you look carefully in the car, and if it isn't there, look through the coat room. It must be one of those two places. Yes, ma'am. Hi, paper. Read all about it. Were you surprised to find that your brother and I were married? <laughs> well, I was sort of surprised. Oh, you mean for a graduation present? Well, my, my wife has made her a dress, a regular lady's dress, like an evening gown, only on a smaller scale, of course. And I'm getting her some high heel slippers, just like a lady wears. Say, she'd be crazy about it. I don't know. That ain't no present for a kid, getting clothes. I used to get birthday presents like that. My mother used to starve herself to buy me a couple of handkerchiefs or a shirt. I didn't like that. I remember once I wanted a train. Gee, how I wanted that train. You know what I got for Christmas? A suit of woolen underwear. I was crazy about machinery. Maybe if my folks had enough dough to buy me things, I wouldn't have learned to pick pockets for them. Nah, uh, a dress ain't no present. I don't know. A girl thinks a lot about clothes. Say, I, I got about 300 bucks here. You want to do me a favor? Don't be crazy. Oh, I don't mean that. Oh, what am I going to blow this dough on? You take it and buy your kid something from me. Yeah, I don't need any money. I'd rather she had it than some crook warden. Come on, I got no one to leave it to. 
Don't worry, it's clean dough. Take it. That's it. Thanks, Michael. That's a lot of money. You keep money in a cigarette case? Yeah, I wouldn't want to lose that. Now, let's see. What can I get her? Yeah, let's see. What did I always want? She don't like machinery, huh? Uh, no, no. She's a girl. She wouldn't like that. You better put that in your other pocket. I might lift it on you. <laughs> it's all right. I trust you. Now, forget myself. I was the best pickpocket on the east side. <laughs> now, what can we get your kid? Oh, Carl, it isn't there. The pen? It's insured, though, isn't it? Yes, but it's some sort of an heirloom in the family. Oh, Tippy will be awfully upset. But it'll be searched everywhere, thoroughly. Yes. Frank's looking for it in the car now. Curtain going up. Curtain. <laughs> Nelson. Why, Madison. I haven't seen you since graduation. That's right. Oh, uh, this is Mrs. Madison. How do you do, Mrs. Madison? Do do? This is my brother Donald. Glad to know you. Glad to meet you. Oh, Stanley, darling. You're in the way. I'll see you after the next act. Right here. How about a stack of dolls, huh? Nah, no, no, she's she's a little bit old for that, I'm afraid. Oh, yeah, that's right. 13 years. Say, I got it. Why don't you just go up to her and say this, baby? What do you want? Anything in the world you want, I'll get it for you. You'll see, it won't even cost 300. Hey, that's a good idea. Then she'd be getting what she wanted. Yeah, even if it's something silly, get it. Gee, if anybody had ever said that to me, I'd remember it all my life. Only don't get her nothing that's gonna make her sick, like cake or a lot of bananas. Oh, no, no. You know, my God, this is pretty nice of you. You better not tell her who it's from. No, I'll, I'll say it's from an uncle out west. Yeah, from Wyoming. Anything you want, kid? Can I do anything for you? No, you can't do anything. I'd just like two things to happen. First, I'd like to get Anderson in a dark alley alone for a couple of minutes. And second, after that, I'd like to drop dead. You couldn't fix that for me, could you? No. Let's go in, huh? Smoke a cigarette. What's the matter, Mr. Taft? Didn't you like it? No, we're not going home, Mac. Haven't seen you around here lately. No. Oh, well, this is Mr. Mako. It's Mac Mason. How do you do? Pleased to meet you. What are you doing with yourself? You hang around with crooks so much, uh, you're getting bad habits. Good day, kid. I'm all right now. Maybe you're smoking too much, huh? Maybe you're right. Let's go on. It is, and the cloakroom boy must have taken it. He did seem a little nervous. How much shall I do? Well, you'd get it by frightening him. Just demand it and threaten to call the police. Maybe he didn't take it. He's only a boy. Oh, he has it. Don't be so soft-hearted. Carl. I want to ask you a favor. It's very important. What is it? It's the only favor I'll ever ask of you. Mm-hmm. 
Please be with me when I tell Tippy about the divorce. Oh. oh, please, darling. You'll think so much more of us. I know Tippy. If we go to him honestly and tell him that we're really in love, he'll want us to be happy. I know he will. We'll tell him tomorrow. Don't you want some time to think it over? My mind's been made up a long time. Sylvia, you'd better know how I'm situated. Oh, darling, I don't care. Oh, you're not somebody's father, are you? Uh, no. Well, then, that's all right. But it's father trouble. Oh, your father. He won't like a divorcee. I don't think so, and he has me pretty much under his thumb with my allowance. Well, Carl, if you can't support me in the manner to which I'm accustomed, I'll only eat two meals a day. That'll only help a little. But just one meal, just some old toast. That's better. <laughs> I've thought of another solution, all by myself. Instead of your going to Reno, you get your divorce right here. But how can we? There's only one ground for divorce in New York. We're not forgetting Tippy's filing clerk, are we? Oh, darling, we couldn't do a thing like that. Sylvia will have to. And even a small property settlement will keep these fingers from getting dishwashy for a long, long time. You're not serious. Darling, I, I know it sounds terrible right now, but the money means nothing to Tippy, And you're really entitled to it. And to us, well, it just means being able to get married or not. No, Carl. I don't think so. Darling, don't make any decision now. You've been a little shocked. By tomorrow, you won't think it's too horrible. That's what I'm afraid of. So I'd better decide now. My code of ethics must seem funny to you. But it's the only code I have. And I have little else. Darling, in a month from now, we laugh at this. I'd have given anything in the world if tonight hadn't happened. If you hadn't told me you loved me so much, you wanted to marry me. Th that's funny, isn't it? Sylvia, wait a minute. How about a drink of water? Sure, kid. I thought that fellow was a friend of yours. That's all right. What's he doing here? Well, we missed that train. Next one doesn't go until 1 o'clock. He's such a harmless sort of a fellow. What's he sent up for? Murder. Can you sleep at night with a criminal? Aren't you afraid he'll run away? Well, you put a sleeping powder in his coffee. Yeah? Uh, one of the boys tried that once. Somebody switched the coffee on him. <laughs> <laughs> Poor fellow, he slept for two days. <laughs> <laughs>
Operator, get me the 48th Street Police Station and hurry. Taft! My gun! It's gone! Gun, you sure? Somebody's picked my pocket. Hello, hello. I want to talk to Captain Seaver. Washroom of the 43rd Street Theater. He can't be off the block yet. He's got on a, a blue suit with a white stripe, no hat, no coat, and he's got a pair of handcuffs to his left wrist. Listen, you better send somebody over to Goldie's pool room right away. Goldie's pool room. Anderson hangs out there. Mick goes out to kill him. He'll go there, sure. And listen, I think he's got a gun. Yeah, 43rd Street Theater. Right. How do you get off that roof? The roof? Mick going up the fire escape. Is there any way to get off that roof? There's another fire escape at the other end of the building. Come on, show it to me. Hurry up. Fourth floor, please. Fourth floor? Could I speak to Mr. Neal? Hello, Sam. How is it? Well, why is it taking so long? Sam, what's wrong? You're keeping something from me. Sam, what's the matter with Ruth? The doctor? All right, I'll talk to him. Hello, Doc. What's the matter? An operation? That's serious, isn't it? Does she have to have it? All right, Doctor, if you think so. Listen, Doctor, if you need any extra nurses or anything, please get them. I don't care about the expense. I'll pay anything it costs. I've got money. I've got friends who lend me as much as you want. I don't want you to take any chances with my wife. My wife comes first. Don't sacrifice my wife for the baby. I don't want the baby. It will take my wife. Please, doctor, I'm trusting you. Thank you, doctor. God bless you, doctor. Go.
And what is that goalie's pool room? Is Mr. Anderson there? Could I please speak to him? Hello, Mr. Anderson? I work at the 43rd Street Theater with your wife. She wants you to come down here right away. No, I don't know what it is, but she says it's very important for you to come down to the theater as quick as you can. Yes? She'll be downstairs in the smoking room, waiting for you. Okay, Mr. Anderson. You're welcome. fellow like you do something you regret for the rest of your life. I don't know what you're talking about. Come on, give it back. I promise no harm will come to you. Give what back? I haven't anything of yours. My wife's diamond pin. Diamond pin? How would I get it? You can search me if you want to. Go ahead, search me. Take my advice, son. I'm older than you. Just go and get it and give it to me. Then we'll both forget the incident. Well, I haven't got it, Listen, I Listen, boy, I've already phoned with the police and on their way over here. This is your last chance. Are you going to be fool enough to go to prison, or are you going to give me back the pin? I tell you, I haven't. Just to be sure you don't get into any trouble, we won't even tell my wife. I'll take charge of it. You can keep on pretending you haven't found it. And I'll give it to her at home. You can trust me. I'll give you back your pin, my dear. I didn't know it was your pin, lady. Honest. I found it on the floor, and I, I put it away. All right, give it to me. Ashamed of me? I'm ashamed of myself. Please, Captain, keep this quiet. We've never had the police in this theater before. Well, where is he? I found it. I didn't steal it. I was only taking care of it. Well, what? Whose is this? Well, I don't know. But I swear I didn't take it off of that coat. I found it on the floor. It's my pen. It was missing from my coat. Let me explain this. This young man evidently tried to steal the class. When I confronted him just now and threatened to call the police, he gave it up. That's a lie. I found the pin on the floor. I was going to turn it in after the show, honest, mister. The pin may have dropped to the floor. Who are you? I'm this lady's husband. Say, this is going to be great. Just great. I'm sorry, Captain. A guy breaks out of a theater. What are the papers going to say? What's the commissioner going to say? What was he doing in the theater? I'm sorry. What's been done? We've got the blocks around it and men going through every building. We've called out every patrol car in this district and we're covering all the railroad stations. That'll do a lot of good in Times Square. Well, he must be on the block someplace. He can't get off. They'll be coming down at any moment now, Captain. If there's a scandal, I'll get blamed. Well, show me how he got out. Please, Captain. Oh, keep your shirt on. May I please have my pen? I'll find out whose it is later. I got troubles of my own. Just stick around. I don't understand, officer. Don't you believe it's mine? Mister, I'm not in the believing business. If it's yours, you'll stick around. Don't you leave this theater. No, sir. You'd better go upstairs, Eddie. Don't worry. I'll get your pin back. There was no need for you to say you were my husband. Who did you want me to say I was? Your lover? I won't go to another show next year. But, Ma, last year we heard fine. You just gotta be lucky and pick out loud actors. Why didn't you make the man show you where the seats were? <laughs> That's what I did. There are some seats empty up in front. We ought to sit in them. Uh, no, I won't do it. But, Ma, how are they going to know it? They only look at your tickets when you come in. Huh? Your hat, Paul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we can't fix that phone from our end. You can't? No, it must be a short circuit. It's got the other phone out of order, and we're getting a busy signal on it. 
What are you going to do about it? Well, I'm going to take that telephone out, the one in the booth. You want to take it out now? Yeah, it'll only take a minute. Oh, come on. If we don't pick him up tonight, we're going to be in a swell spot. We'll get him, Captain. Coffee? Have you any tea? I'm very sorry. We have nothing but coffee. Coffee Lots. keeps me awake nights. Hey, you check that one. Excuse me. Disturbance, will there? Ah, no, we'll be quiet. Here, hold that. The receiver was off the hook. It was. Aren't you going to take the phone out? No, we don't have to now. It'll be all right as soon as it rings. Come on. Excuse that phone. I thought you wanted me. Get out of here. Uh, coffee? Thank you. Sugar? I hope it's a girl. I never want a son of mine to go through what I have tonight. How long does an operation like that take? I don't know. I never had one. Got those ticket stubs? Oh, yeah. Go and see who's sitting on either side of those seats. Yes, sir. Curtain going up. Curtain going up. Yes, sir. Yes. Here, give me one of them. Awfully glad to have met you, Donald. Same here, George. We'll get together regularly. You now bet. on. And I mean that. Yes, sir. Goodbye. Bye. I'll be expecting to see you very soon. Oh, you'll see me a lot sooner than you expect, Mrs. Madison. And let me tell you something, you know, you're just what I knew Stanley's mother would be like. Oh, Stanley! Come on, Lily. <laughs> Thanks, pal. Come on, Mama. We take those front seats that we can see from. station offered a hundred bucks reward for Mako, dead or alive, and it was coming to me. And I still don't see how he got that gun. I told you he lifted it from the ticket taker. Yeah, while well, he was handcuffed to you. No pickpockets there. I said he lifted it from the ticket taker. It wasn't my fault. I didn't feel anything. Well, show me how he did it. Come on, act it out. Where are you standing? Come here, son. Yeah, up here. We were all very close together, and I had the overcoat over my arm. I was trying to hide the handcuffs. I... Offered Mako a cigarette. Say, how come he had his right hand free? The cuffs are supposed to be on his right hand and your left. You know that. I'm left-handed. Well, go ahead. You offered him a cigarette. I offered Mako a cigarette and he took one. I... Well, what of it? That's 300 bucks, Taft. I'm allowed to carry it in a cigarette case? 
You never had 300 bucks at one time in your life. I've been carrying it around for weeks. Taft, something smells around here. What are you trying to say, Siva? That gun, somebody handed it to now him. I tell you, he lifted it. Now I tell you, I don't believe you. Let me see your gun. Say, listen, you, you gave me that gun, you know you did. I didn't, I, I didn't, honest, I didn't. All right, pull yourself together. Yes, sir. Captain. Well, what's the idea? These people were in the seats. Huh? We didn't think anybody would mind. The, the seats were empty anyway. It's all right, it's all right. This man's a detective. Oh, we didn't mean no harm. We, 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 we couldn't hear from the back. We were only sitting there a minute. All right, go on back to your seats. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We sit in the back. We can hear fine. I told you we'd get caught. Imagine hiring detectives. Yes, just imagine. Well, who was sitting next to them? They were sitting on the aisle. And the third seat was a girl about nine years old. A girl about nine years old. That's fine. That's just dandy. Now, let's get out of here. Tab, you stay here. And you tell those people I've taken the pin to the... Hey! Pin. Well, what's the matter? I knew it. I knew somebody was mixed up in this. I haven't done anything. Where is he, Anderson? Where is he? Where is who? Say, what is this, a frame-up? Hey, don't start playing dumb on me, Anderson, or I'll murder you. Where's Mako? Mako? I don't know. Don't start that with me. I tell you, I'll bring you. Come on, now then, where is he? He's been caught. He's in jail. Or he's on his way out west to get hung. You know he got away. No. No, I didn't know. That theater crowd will be coming out in about 20 minutes. Anderson, I'm taking you to the office. I'll give you the worst licking you ever had. Are you going to tell me where Mako is? I don't know. Honest, I wouldn't help him. He hates my insides. He only came back to New York to get me. I've been undercover. Ask Taft. Now, he's no friend of Mako's. What are you doing here? My wife called me. She told me to come here. Your wife? Yeah, she works here. She's an usher. I got the message half an hour ago. I came right over. Yeah? What's her name? May. May Danish. Yeah, she works here. Hey! Where are you going? No place. I'll come back here. Come here. What do you know about this? Nothing. I don't know anything about it. Well, you stay here. Well, I might as well take it on the chin now as later. Call the commissioner at his house. Butterfield 8, 2598. If he wants to come down, we'll be at the office. Okay. Look after him. Don't let this one get away. Officer, my wife and I have discussed this and we've decided we'd rather not press charges. Press what charges? Against this boy. I may have been a bit hasty in accusing him. After all, I really haven't any proof that he didn't find the pin on the floor, as he says. I've lost it before. The clasp isn't very strong. Sure, mister. I found it on the floor. I wasn't keeping it. Do you think it's this lady's pin? Yes, sir, I think so. Well, if you found it on the floor, how can you be so sure it's hers? 
Well, she says it's her pin. I'm not really sure. Frankly, officer, I don't understand this. Surely we don't look like thieves. And if we tell you it's our pin and this boy admits it's ours, why are you insisting on an investigation? Mister, this is pretty expensive. Is it insured? Of course it is. No one answers. All right. Mrs. Temple. Mr. Temple just called the box office and left word that he's working very late and won't be home tonight. Thank you, Frank. Shall I keep on looking for the pin? No, we found it. You can go now. That'll be all, Frank. Yes, ma'am. You're Mrs. Temple? Yes. And who did you say you were? I already told you. Mr. Temple. The Mr. Temple the chauffeur mentioned happens to be my father. Yes, I'm afraid I only have one husband. Tap, get a hold of that chauffeur. Officer, I certainly resent this. You have no right to do what you're doing, and you know it. Say, this is blood. Look at this. It's blood. Huh? There's a lot of it. Where did he get shot? In here? No, Mr. Taft shot at him in there as he was going through the vent. Didn't he run in here? No. I was in here. When he got back in here, he telephoned somebody. He called me! He told me to come here! Come along, dear. It's no use us Stay here! I thought you said your wife called you. No, 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 he called me. I didn't recognize his voice. He said he had a message from my wife. He's hanging around here. What did I tell you? Where did this lead to? He's waiting for me someplace. He'll kill me. You gotta protect me. Go on, get away. Take me to jail. I'll go any place. He'll get me. He's crazy, I tell you. And he's a killer. I know him. There we are. Put your hands up. Up. Don't be a fool, Mako. You can't get off this block. You don't see me trying, do you? How's it feel, Anderson? I didn't know you were here until you started talking so loud. You always did talk too much. Michael, I didn't squeal on you. They knew it anyway. They came to me first. I, I could shoot you in the head, but I wouldn't do it. You'd be dead too quick. Michael, don't do it. I'll try to help you. I'll get your life imprisonment. You can trust me, Michael. But I want you to die slow. Michael, no. It's worse than hanging, Anderson. Don't move. How is it, Anderson? Don't be dead too quick. You'd like another bullet, my friend, but you can't have it. They weren't going to kill me quick, either. They were going to hang me. Dead already, huh? Don't try anything. I only get hung once. Anybody I kill now is on the house. Stay where you are. Don't start after me. You'd only save yourself from getting hurt. I don't want to shoot anybody. Drop it, Mako. something just before he died, didn't he? Yeah. He said, thank you, pal. I guess your mind goes just before you kick off. Well, come on, let's get them both out of here. Is my phone for the wagon? Yeah. No. Only interfere with theater traffic. Put them in the cab. Jim. your office tomorrow, Mr. Temple, and we'll have the insurance company identify the pin. That's all right, isn't it? Well, yes, I, I guess it's all right. All right. No! No. Thank you. 
you a few things. It's all right. It's all right, Cooks. I think they're just drunk. Darwin, you don't know what happened. May was married all the time. She was married. She was only trying to get money out of me. Eddie! Eddie, wait a minute. You mean you don't need the $200? No. And you don't know what I almost did to get it. What you almost did? Huh? What I almost did? It's here. 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 I just got a son, a boy, seven pounds, four ounces. Doc says it looks like me. While the show was going on, you're the first to know. <laughs> I'm going to frame this. I'll give it to him when he grows up. And I'll tell him his father was right here. Say, bye, bye, gosh, I've seen this show before. My cold, my cold, my cold, my cold. My, cold. my mother and father are doing fine. Hey, here's your hat. Oh, yes, yes, don't, don't worry. Everything's going to be all right. <laughs>